Welcome to the PPC Success Spotlight Series. This is a, an interview series where I interview one of the students from the Profitable Producer course that have taken the course, they've implemented it into their businesses, and they've seen success despite whatever limitations they have in their studio or in their area. So I hope you enjoy this interview. So I'm here with Mr. John McLucas from McLucas Media. And uh, he is one of my students here at the Profitable Producer course. And I would love for you to just kind of give us a quick rundown of what uh, what you do and what sort of music you typically work with. What services do you offer? Okay. Them? What genre? So the two things that I do now is full production. So that's people bringing in demos that are typically like a vocal, vocal and piano or vocal and guitar from their phones or some of them will get little logic demos together and then taking that all the way through to the end process and then the other thing is mixing yeah so people who will just send me files um and i've kind of stopped just offering recording or on its own and have slowly kind of started to narrow in on those two things and i'm typically working with variations of pop music um or pop formatted music and i do get the occasional like rock or indie or the one artist that a couple artists that like progressive kind of rock and theatrical craziness which is Fun. Also fun. Those are the main yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, is your studio is your studio based out of your home, or do you have a commercial space? Like, what's your facility like? So, I rent out a space in a rehearsal studio uh, complex. So, I just I rent the room there, and I stay in the studio. So, it's technically, I guess, a combination, but it is a commercial facility, and it makes it really nice. I used to do it out of my home, but I find it better to live in a studio space that's more commercial feeling. So when I bring clients over, it's much more just a nicer experience than coming into my home and kind of going through like the kitchen to my bedroom in the back of the house. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, your experience. Let's say, well, first of all, you joined the Profitable Producer course back when? Was it December, January? When did you join the course? I think it was definitely before New Year's because okay. I think I, I left home shortly after and I definitely watched a good amount during the holidays. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so... Uh, Let's just talk about the year leading up to that. What was your business like? What was your studio like? What was your experience like uh, in your studio kind of leading up to, to before you joined the course? Well, I'd say this 2017 overall was really the first time that I gave a full, full, full-time effort at it. Um, up until that point, I had been in a touring band. Uh, that's, that's a whole other <laughs> 15 to 25 minute thing, uh, but it ended about February and it had really sabotaged a lot of my own business because it's kind of like that expectation was to be the priority at all times. So I found myself burning clients to like jump on the conference calls in the middle of a session with no notice. Uh, so I'd say this was really the first year that I, 2017 was the first full time attempt where I'm like, this is my number one right now. And, um, and it went pretty well during the time touring in the band. I'd learned a lot of the really general things on, a lot of the growing pains on my own. Um, but I wasn't consistently booked out. I'd say I maybe had a couple projects a month that weren't super well paid. I mean, I picked up my first album ever in 2017, but I uh, kind of stopped counting the hours. I used to log my hours and I got really sad about it. So I stopped. Uh, I was definitely making less than minimum wage on a lot of the projects. Oh, man. But I mean, I had no life. My relationship ended shortly after the band ended, so I had nobody but myself to spend time with, and it was really the perfect storm to get a lot of those initial projects going um, and way over put my time into things for very little money. Um, and by the end of the year, I had a, a, I think I made about only, gosh, twenty to twenty four thousand dollars in those 12 months. Which um, it sounds like, I mean, for a lot of people, they probably are like, well, that's a lot of money, but you're... Where are you located, first of all? So I'm in Los Angeles. Yeah. $24,000 in Los Angeles is like the poverty line in, 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 that, in yeah, that area. Yeah. It really is. And um, some good, I had some couple of good things going for me. One was I was super resourceful. So I was staying in. Well, okay. So when I moved way before this, that was in this band. We had just gotten signed. We were putting out this thing. We were playing big ass show with Tool. It was like all the stuff was going down everything collapsed. So I was like, Oh, I'm just going to go live in the hood because I'm never going to be there. And I'm going to be on the road all the time. So I was living in South central, like near the USC area. I've heard rap songs. 
Yeah, you've heard rap songs. Yeah. Bars on the windows, like <laughs> not a great area. Um, so fortunately, I had a really low overhead, and that's actually where like my first official studio location was, was South Central, oddly enough. Um, but I had really low rent, so that helped a lot. And um, so that just helped, yeah, with not making much money, but it was definitely still pretty rough um, making ends meet. But I went from that to living in the studio in this commercial space, so I don't have a personal rent and it's just a flat rate per month. There's no utilities. There's no electricity. There's no internet bill. It's just one amount and it's fixed. And when I go on traveling on tour, I can ha- I have other people use it. So I've created a really good situation to work around the high overhead to allow myself to put more money back into the business. Okay, so, so I'm done with that. Yeah. So, you know, what what led you to want to join something like the Profitable Producer Course? Because you, I mean, you were making. 25 grand is not a ton in LA money, but that's still a pretty, pretty good amount of money that for most like startup home studio kind of guys. So what made you think that you would need something like PPC to really uh, help you out? What made you even want to join that? Um, well, I mean, I'd say the first thing that it started, it was going to the summit um, and the whole presentation, the complete client journey thing was, was very eye opening for me. And it was, of course I know that I was like, that's like the gateway drug into all of it. Um, well, first of all, what for people that don't know what that is, what is the summit? Oh, okay. So the, the summit is the unstoppable recording machine, like recording, like audio nerd summit It's over in Orlando. It's like a big conference. It's for three or four days. There's a lot of seminars and you spoke at it and mm-hmm. did the whole the client journey. So that I mean, that's, that's what got me interested in it. And it kind of showed me how bad I was at, at like nurturing people throughout throughout the process and i'd always just kind of thought of it in that old school sense of like oh yeah they'll hit me up like when they're ready and all that stuff instead of like no i'm gonna go get it i'm gonna like i'm gonna go get it but very politely like like the gentle paw of a tiger like powerful but still soft and fuzzy um and so that's that just kind of saw how it showed me how much i was missing on that back end and i was like all right this guy's on to something. I want to, I want to do more of this because it, it, it already like changed the game. Just the stuff from that one presentation, some about proposals, talk just the whole journey. And I think you mentioned some CRM stuff very briefly, yeah, very briefly. It was kind of a uh, raise your hand in this room. If you're using a CRM, which for those who don't know what that is, it's a customer relationship management system. We talk about it in the course in module one, I believe it's yes, a module one. Yeah. Or two. Yeah. Module one. Yeah, that's right. But, um, yeah. So basically just to kind of recap what you're saying here, you're saying that, you know, you had some success with your studio, which is great, but, and you were kind of humming along, but seeing me speak at that event, you kind of realized, holy shit, there's a lot I don't know. <laughs> is that is exactly that pretty fair yeah. to say? It totally opened my eyes to, to the whole back end of the business thing. Like a lot of people coming into audio, you don't consider the actual business part of it. Um, and you just think about the doing of the audio and I've definitely burned a couple of bridges because I wasn't the best business person um, and I'm just like, wow, okay. If I want to take this to the next level, cause I knew that I was doing at least a couple of things, right. Uh, but I also have like no other skills. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to work at Costco, dude. <laughs> no, I, I can't. I, I can't blame you. Let's kind of skip ahead now. Like uh, it's, uh, as of right now, it's April, 2018, middle of April. Um, what has your business, what kind of progress have you seen since you joined the course at the end of the December? I mean, it's been, it's been extremely night and day um, for me. And I will also say, I will give credit to the free content you put out as well, because I digested, I think, every blog article, um, the Q&As of Brian's brain, like all that stuff leading up to it. I was keeping up to date with that and following all the stuff that you were preaching through all that. So just those things alone had already got me to the point where post-summit, like mid-December, I was already had like three weeks in January booked. Um, but after joining the course and continuing to push that stuff at my peak, I was like eight weeks booked ahead. Um, I think it's end of January and I already had most of February and March booked. Uh, and I had already raised my rates because after I got about a month ahead, I'm like, that's fine, baby. But bing. And then I kept, I kept booking stuff out. And right now I'm, I'm sitting about, I mean, I'm going on vacation for a month. So I have, I'm still working though, you know, on the road, but, uh, I'm sitting about six to eight weeks out consistently now. Um, and yeah, it's just, it just exploded. I, I can't, I have no complaints it, and it feels 
so good for once to not have that worry. You know, I know it'll come back. I know how slow seasons. I know that I'm just riding high and I'm loving it. Um, but yeah, like if you stay consistent with the client, the lead acquisition stuff, you may not have those slow months if you're consistently doing that stuff. I mean, that's kind of what I have in the back of my head, but I feel like that might be a little cocky of me. But I hear people talking about slow seasons. It's like, hey, it's it's good. To, every- it's good to be mentally prepared for the worst, but making sure you're physically doing the work to prepare for the best, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it, it's like in the middle of, of, of lifting at the gym, like between sets, I'm like going through that app vamper and I've got two. I've got one client through that and one like lead, uh, one pretty strong lead through that. And so I'm just like messaging people on there through some of the cold outreach stuff that you mm-hmm. teach. And like, get, like, so I'm just fitting it in whenever I can. If I'm pooping, I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm going to title this but, video. How John McLucas finds leads while he poops. <laughs> make bank while pooping. Yeah, oh, there we man. go. There we that's go. Like, that's a core title. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I think if I do stick with all the stuff that you've taught that, yeah, I could possibly avoid the slow seasons because it's really just this like recurring thing and, and everything from like the cold outreach stuff to the referrals. Like I made a post in the six figure home studio group because I just came back home and I have to buy so many people lunch right now. They keep sending me clients. I'm not fine, but I'm just going to get super fat because I know where all these places, I know the places like to go. Um, So I don't know if it's going to be, hopefully it's not going to be anywhere. slow season. Yeah. 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 So for those people that, that think it's, you know, I've interviewed a couple other people uh, of my students and some of those people are in really small areas and there's disadvantages with that because, you know, you're not surrounded by a lot of artists, but you also don't have a lot of competition, but you also have low overhead. So it's like one of those balances in these small rural areas, but LA has a thing. It, it's great because there's a lot of artists around, but there's also the, the issue of it's really saturated with, with competition and it's a really expensive place to have a studio. So what do you say to, to people who are in LA or in New York or in one of these more expensive cities like Nashville, which is not as expensive as LA or New York? Uh, what do you say to those people who are trying to make it or who want to make it in these bigger cities, but may, may be thinking like, oh, it's too oversaturated or, oh, it's too expensive to really do it here? Um, gosh, no, but I, there's so many things I want to say to them. But I guess the first thing I'd say is it's really not. I feel like the moment that I cleaned up my, my act and considered my business in the, in the really the professionalism and like all the stuff in the proposals to the way that I interface with clients and the way I follow up the moment that I really created like a professional experience from beginning to end. I realized that about 98% of the competition doesn't do that. Yeah. And they're not actual business people. Like they might be talented. Like I've gotten mixes from people, not because I'm a better mixer, but because the guy just doesn't respond to them. Yep. And, they, and then they fire him. because they're like, all right, like just send us the stems. We're just going to go to somebody else. And they're like, John, and so just, if you can just be a good business person and kind and relatable, like you're already winning. Yep. And every single artist I've seen come up, every producer or like actor or comedian, all these people in these different creative fields that are really on top of like all the business stuff and having that back end really gives you a much bigger edge than I think people I've realized I've said this before. I'm going to say it again and I'll say it till I die. It's like, it is not the most talented person that wins in this, in this industry. Unfortunately, uh, if it were, if it were based on raw talent, uh, then there would be a completely different set of people who are the leaders in this industry. And, and there's always exceptions. There's always people who are terrible at business. They don't even want to think about it. And they've somehow fell their way to success. I talked about it at the summit. That was one of my parts of the presentation. But at the end of the day, if you have, a great amount of skill level. Say, so, I mean, you're, you're good at what you do, but you are, all, you, there's always going to be people, especially in LA who are way better than you. And there's nothing you can yeah. do about it. I mean, in, in Nashville, I'm nowhere anywhere. I'm not even in the conversation for the top five percentile here in Nashville, but as far as what I earn, it, it, it is, I am in the top five percentile of, of Nashville producers. And it's not because I'm in the top five percent uh, talent wise. It's because I understand the business of running a studio. And I think that the more people that understand that, it, the the harder it's going to be. And if you can't get the business side down, you are going to be the people that are left behind, unfortunately. And I think you've done a great job of, of implementing both sides of it in your business. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's exactly how I feel. I, the moment I stopped, because I got to the point where yeah, I'm, like, I'm good. Yeah, I'm very good. I'm definitely giving quality products. And so it's like, okay, cool. People like my stuff. Now I'm just going to focus my shift to, to making my making into an actual business instead of 
um, I think you kind of talked about this instead of making it like a commodity commodity. Yeah. It's like finding out why somebody is going to come here instead of to like the 80 bajillion people that are down that are probably in the same building uh, <laughs> somewhere. I just don't quite know where they are. I know where a few of them are, but I'm sure there's more. Um, so that's, yeah, that's really been the key for me. And um, I found some pretty like unique things that I've been able to kind of like add in and sprinkle in that, that make it seem really like different uh, without too much extra work on my end. So that's been nice. That's great. So do you think uh, you would be in a different place now if you hadn't joined the course? Yeah. I mean, I, I think I, I'd still have progressed from last year, but nowhere, nowhere near where it has like at the rate I'm going, I'm going to beat 2017 earnings by the end of June. That's awesome. So yeah. Like, so that's, fuck. that'll be nearly a, or somewhere around a doubling of your income, uh, within a year or so. Right. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's assuming things go, you know, they can always right. go really badly, but I've had so many W's. I can't, yeah. I can't, I can't think they're going to stop. I know, I know, uh, I know. It's like, you don't want to jinx yourself, but you also want to be able to celebrate, you know, your wins that you've yeah. had so far. So for anyone who is kind of watching this right now, who is on the fence about joining the Profitable Producer Course, what would you say to those people who are uh, considering it, maybe hesitant or not quite sure if it's right for them? I'd say if anything in the business end sounds intimidating or like that you're unsure about on like how to deal with clients or how, just finding leads, which I feel like every single person, that's like the number one thing I see, of course, because it's so easy to be an audio engineer or to like, I mix, um, but then finding people and beyond the talent is so difficult and just anything to do with not the talent that you're lacking in, which there probably is. I feel like every single person, um, I could probably redo the entire course now and still find things to get out of it. Um, every single year to refine on my business. So I, I would say it's, it's just more than worth it. Like, the, like we talked about on the message before that one single follow-up sequence, that was even before the course, I think just from the free stuff you put out, that was already worth thousands of dollars for me. And it's, yeah, it just brought me so much business. And I've had two different people this week for proposals. I sent out comment on how professional the presentation is and how much they love my personability and how they love the samples. And like, now I've created a package, like more than just a, Hey, I'm mixed bro. Like here it is. So it's so, it's so worth it. And I would just say you, it's, it's like the kind of thing where you, for me, I couldn't afford not to do it. Um, same thing with the summit, like that brought so many connections. I found a great assistant through that. I found this through that. Like I know it's, you know, I know the course costs money, the summit costs money, but in the end of the day, they both more than paid themselves back and have led to way bigger things because of it. So I, I would say, um, find a way to afford it. Yep. I mean, I, I've, I've spent tens of thousands of dollars of my own money on my own education. And if you look at it as a cost, that seems insane. If you look at it as an investment, that's, it seems insane not to do because yeah. anytime you, you invest in yourself like that, it's something that no one can take away. They can take away your car. They can take away your house. They can take away anything from you except what, what you have learned and implemented as far as your knowledge, skills, and abilities. And, and actually speaking to that with all the stuff that you put into the PCC, a lot of it is useful in like any business. So for example, the fact that I'm able to help my mom manage her relationships with her clients or the people, like the people that she works for or anything um, my dad's business, not as much because it's very old school. He's, he's fine. He's set. He's got his things going, but like any business that I want to start or somebody I meet who has a business, like I can add value to that and that, and I've helped artists with general principles that I've learned as well from the PPC and been able to then like, then I'm adding value to them. And that just brings the whole circle around. Um, so yeah, it's beyond just your own business. Like you could start any venture and all of these principles about 98% of them will all apply. You need to change the jargon from like... Yeah, so I mean, honestly, yeah. any service-based business, these these principles apply to. And I just, yeah. all I do is I take these things that are out there and things that you may have actually read about, you may have actually learned about before, but it just went over your head because it was in no way relatable to a studio. I take it and I just distill it down in a way that makes sense and that you can implement into your studio business. So um, you could take this and exactly. run with really any service area, <laughs> any service business. 
Yeah. And so that, yeah, you just, just do it. Just do it. If you, <laughs> if you get, if you give any kind of a fuck about being a producer, being an audio engineer, recording, mixing, and if you want that to be what you're doing, like you, you just need to do it and just trust in the process because that's what I did. I, I went balls out and I'm just like, also because I saw how valuable it was. I'm like, holy shit, I need to do this now. And then, yeah. oh, wow, this one. Like this thing. And I, I can't be more happy with what's happening because of it. And getting my first Google ad going. There we Make go. Me. Yep. There we go. Good, good, good. Yeah, we, we have a Google ads workshop inside the course as well. So, yeah. And cool. uh, my sister does cli- uh, conversion rate optimization for a digital marketing company. That's perfect specifically for you. Specifically working on landing pages. Yep. So I'm like, and from a landing page, I'm like, hey. <laughs> all right. Well, so, if you've managed, you've now managed to confuse everyone, but all that stuff's explained inside the course. So, John, do you want to talk about the Accountability Accelerator Bootcamp bonus? It's, it's an optional thing, but you chose to, to join it and tell, talk about your experience within that. Okay. Um, yes, it's optional, but it's, not only is it super fun, but, um, I mean, you can like win, besides, not, besides the fact that it's super fun, you can win stuff. And even if, if you just complete it, you, what my money increased by like 40%. Oh, I still need to send the thing, but my money increased by like 40% and you can't make any investment that, that increases 40% we, in eight weeks. We basically pay you to be a part of this boot camp If you, yes, if exactly. you successfully complete it, yeah. if you succeed, you get money, you get your money back plus like more. Um, but it was, a, it was just a really nice, it's like a good team building exercise because I was one of the team leaders. And for me, it was like a great learning skill beyond the content of the homework, um, figuring out how to deal with, you know, when I was having people that maybe weren't responsive or were just like straight up telling me like to stop bugging them, uh, <laughs> figuring out like people management skills, team building, and even some of the other people in my team really helping to pick up and carry other team members and help them out. Um, and it's great to build a sense of community and, and having all those deliverables. It really forces you to execute on the really key points of the PPC, which is what you paid to do. Yeah. So, and, I mean, there's nice there's been so many, I, we take, we, we ask people to take a survey at the end of the, the, the uh, boot camp, and overwhelmingly the response about the boot camp is it made me implement the things I would have skipped otherwise. And they're happier yeah. for it because people will tend to say, Oh, I should do that, but, but they never do. Right. I mean, I've been exactly. guilty of that myself. So you, the, the boot camp is there to, to basically force you, for lack of a better word, to force you to do those things. And it's almost, I've never seen someone say, damn, I wish I would never have done those action items. <laughs> oh, gosh, I hate that my invoicing system is so just well put together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gosh, yeah, that's exactly how it was for me. Because I had gotten through the stuff that I thought was like the easiest to set up in my to-do list from the course that I got mm-hmm. through up to that point but I still had lagged on certain things that were deliverables in the course. And of course I'm glad that I did them and they generated either leads or connections or maybe nothing, but we're still homies. So in four years there, they might think of me and um, yeah, it was a hundred percent like a great, a great cherry on top to really push you to do it. And I would recommend you doing it because all literally all you have to do is show up and just do your homework and you'll be a lot better at your business. You're going to get, it's only $20 opt in and, we all got back like 32 or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it costs you, you make a little bit of money or you can make big prizes out of it. Uh, if you rank in the top three teams and it, it's like a no brainer. It, it really was a no brainer when I saw it in the thing. I'm like, fuck yeah. Yep. Winning me. team all got $500 gift cards to sweetwater.com. So yeah, that's there's not really bad. no reason to not be doing it. Yeah. Um, that kind of program was great. And for me being a team leader, it was really great to, be able to help like everybody with the different challenges they had. I had, I think two people go through breakups. One guy had a kid. Uh, two kids were actually born during the boot camp. Yes. And we named prizes after both the kids. I, I love, I love that. That was so cute. Yeah. Uh, I know he's, yeah, they're legends now already legends. Uh, so yeah, they kind of be kind of ability program. I understand that like it can't be, you can't have everybody do it, but it'd be, I feel like that's in my opinion, it's mandatory. Yep. Like if you're signing up for this course, you do the accountability program the moment it opens. Cause I know it's limited because the way it's structured, but like you, you gotta do it. Yep. So then it forces you to, to do, to do your homework, um, or be shamed forever <laughs> and be lame. Yep. It puts a lot of pressure on you, but it's a good kind of pressure. It's like a pressure that when you finish it, you're like, Oh, thank God. It feels good. 
yeah, feels good, man. It has, it has a rewarding thing because then you yeah. get like a little pat on the head from your team leader and your boys. And John, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, talk to us today. And uh, I look forward to seeing what you do for the rest of this year. Dude, me too. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. So that is it for my interview with John McLucas. Hopefully you found that inspiring and insightful. Uh, it's, it's cool to see someone in such a large city who is still having success despite whatever competition could be in that area and despite the living expenses. He makes the sacrifices that he needs and he does what he has to do to make it work. If you want to learn more about the course that he went through called The Profitable Producer Course, you can just go to theprofitableproducer.com and all the information is on there. 